Whoa, Nelly. Okay, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22 on uh, Silver Run Forest. Uh, we are going to start this episode by going for a little drive. Uh, we're going to pick up the other carving that I know, uh, you know, the, because I know the location of it, and that'll get us another $50,000. And then we're going to swap those trailers and look into getting into uh, containers in this episode. So that is the plan. Hope you guys are all having a great day and looking forward to some more uh, Silver Run forest logging here. Uh, so this thing is actually up by the original property that the that you start with in the game. And so we're going to head back up there. And I just, I, I didn't even, whoop, we need to go, ah, we need to go this way. I didn't even actually know it was there either. I mean, not I, I just happened to, to notice it. And I didn't even, the very first time I saw it, I didn't even really know what it was. I hadn't learned about the collectibles until later. Um, but it is up there, and we do know that it's up there. So we're going to go ahead and grab it. And take a little gator for a spin as well. So to get to it, it's right up. I don't know if we can... It's up there. Uh, can we drive around here to get to it? Yeah. So, yeah, it's right up here in... Uh, over there on the that rock. <coughs> Gazoontite. Excuse me. It is an owl. Look at that. You found the owl sculpture. Just 18 more to go. And we now have $116,655. That's amazing. And now we do have that $80,000 bank loan. Um, but I'm not sure I want to pay it off just yet because we may have to turn around and then borrow more money again to, to get set up with containers. So let's just sit on the that money for a little bit here. And maybe what we'll do, too, is we're not going to do it in this episode. Or maybe we should do it in this episode. I was just going to say, maybe we should just drive around and see if we can find a few more of those things. Uh, because, I mean, we're always going to need the money, but we we need it the most right now. Uh, on the other hand, we could drive around for a long time and not find another one. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, no, let's not do that. I, I think what I would rather do with the carvings is I'd rather just discover them organically. So, you know, we just, we come across them as we come across them. Um, but at some point, you know, if there's still a lot of them to be found, uh, we might intentionally go looking for them. But for now, I think we won't do that. All right, I need to, I need to see where I'm at here. We are, yeah, we're going down the right road. Okay. Okay. Um, so actually though, yeah, we want to go home and get our, and swap those trailers. That's the next thing on the list. And that's going to also, uh, we're also going to make around $20,000 from doing that too, which will be nice. Okay. So, uh, I will see you guys back at the ranch and the, oh, you know, the other thing I wanted to do, I don't know if I'm going to do this today. I wanted to do a little bit of stump grinding just so we kind of stay on top of it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll see. I'll let you know. You guys will know one way or the other <laughs> what we end up doing. Okay, I have decided that I, I do want to do a little bit of stump grinding. So let's uh, get that knocked out first, and then we'll head back down to town with that trailer.
Man, I cannot for the life of me get this stupid tree to register on the chainsaw so I can just get rid of it. It's a little bit of a hassle, man. You know, I wonder if... um. I'm thinking maybe we should get a forestry mulcher. They're just they're a little they're quite a bit more expensive, but they're so much easier to use. Yeah, I cannot get that stupid thing to register at all. Alright, well, I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time on that. So yeah, we might be we might grab a forestry mulcher. I I tend to like those better anyways. Because they grind stumps, but they also remove brush and you can even make fields with them, though they're not really very practical for that. Okay. So, I guess that's good enough for now. I don't know. We probably missed a few more, but... We got some of them anyway, so that's good. Just leave the skid steer right there. And I already have the truck hooked up to the... To the trailer so let's go grab that and take it on down into town and do the little swap here Okay, so there's our used trailer. And it's blue. Which is not really that big a deal, though I might at some point repaint it. Come on, car. This could have gone around that way. <laughs> That's too easy, though. Okay, so this is 33% damaged. It looks like it's in pretty good shape, though. Overall. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to repair this for $5 Mickey Holla and repaint it for $1,300 Mickey Holla and then sell it for $51,000 and 18 some odd cents. That brings us up to $166,000. Um, let's get this one repaired. Only 39 bucks to repair that, huh? Oh no, that was my truck. All right, well, we need to repair that too. Okay, so if we, okay, we gotta go into customize and to turn that black's gonna cost us $2,000. It's funny that it costs more money to repaint it than it does to t repaint it as a different color. That is unusual. Uh, okay. I wouldn't have done this if we weren't actually doing relatively well on our on our cash at the moment. But I just like the black look. Okay, good. So the trailer is now in tip-top condition. It's repainted. It actually looks really good too. It's not uh, not too much wear and tear on it as far as it is it looks visibly. It is like three years old though, but I mean for something like that, I don't think that's a big deal. It makes a lot bigger difference when it's a machine like a tractor or something, uh, the older it gets. Okay, while we're here, let's look and see what's on sale. I haven't even looked at that today. Oh, yeah, we did. Sorry, this is the same in-game day as last episode. I, I was thinking it wasn't. You know, I'm almost, I'm almost tempted to buy this one, too, just because, you know, we're probably going to want two of these, but 
No, I better we better not go go crazy here. Let's just let's just keep our cool. Okay, so now we want to we want to try containers out. So let's see, where do we get those from? Under miscellaneous, maybe? No. Okay, would we get them under forestry? Nope. Okay, well, I'm not sure where you get them in the normal category, but if we go to here, we can find them here in the platinum extent, expansion. There we go. Okay, so shipping container. Now, the deal with these is you purchase them, but then when you turn them in, you you lose them, right? Because the wood has to, the container has to stay with the wood. Uh, but they're, you know, they're not that expensive. And considering the fact that we apparently get a crap ton more money with it, um, it's not that bad a deal. Okay. So we could go with the same blue color as our trailer. Now there's, uh, what I'm thinking about maybe doing is getting two six meter trailers and filling them both up. That's probably going to bring in some serious cash for us. Uh, let's see, design lizard forestry, lizard logistics. Sure, why not? This None of this stuff costs us extra money. Um, okay, yeah, so let's let's do that. We'll, we'll, we'll work with the six meter ones. One thing that I've heard about these containers is it's really important that you put the right length of wood in them because if you put in... Uh, if you put in like a shorter piece of wood, you take up, let's see, how does it work? It, you take up space in there that the longer piece, you basically, you lose money. That's what it boils down to. I'm probably not doing a very good job of explaining it. Uh, okay. So we're going to purchase two of these and we should be able to fit these on our trailer. But what we have to do is we have to get a forklift. Now, I have it on good authority that there is um, a large Manitou forklift that is available for us to use in perpetuity, uh, thanks to uh, Mayor Marvin Maguzla. Um The only thing is, is we're going to have to go get that forklift, but we should be able to go get it on the low boy and bring it back over here. So it's located down the road that way at the main sawmill. So let's go do that first, but we're, we also need to think about how we're going to load these trailers. I don't really have the ideal setup for loading them. Uh, do I not have my lines hooked up? I didn't. Okay. I was wondering why it was so sluggish there. So let's go get that forklift first. And what I might, what I think I'm going to do with that forklift is I think I'm going to actually leave it here at the store because this is where we buy the containers. When we drop the containers off at the sell point, uh, we don't we don't have to unload them ourselves. We just have to load them when they're empty. So it kind of makes sense to keep the forklift at the store. So that is the plan stand. Let's go get it. It's just right down the road here. get over there I guess I took a wrong turn this is my actually my first time coming over to this mill nothing else we can drive across the tracks here even though there's not a a thingy for it a crossing but -oop, ba -oop. Oh, I guess there's another road out here, which is apparently the one that we would take. Gotcha. Okay, so what we want to do here is get our ramps out. 
and we'll get the forklift over here first to see if it's um if it's wide enough. Can we actually go in here? Oh, we can go in here. That's neat. So we can actually come here to buy lumber, and I guess you would do that if you needed to, you know, needed it for like the roller coaster, and you didn't quite have enough or whatever, or you wanted to just, you had other money, so you wanted to spend money to buy it instead of make it yourself, that kind of idea. But we're going to make it ourselves, at least for the most part. Okay, yeah, so this, this big Manitou forklift here is, we don't own it, but we can use it. And so it is, for all intents and purposes, it's ours. It doesn't tell me what kind of condition it's in, though. It doesn't show up as our owned equipment, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, so it's just a general use. Um, oh, it's in perfect condition, actually, if we look at the wrench icon on the right-hand side. Perfect. Okay, this is also a new machine um, to the expansion. Why can I not get into first person? Well, that's interesting. It doesn't have a first person view? This should be the first person view because my head tracker is working. I think that must be broken. <laughs> it's probably something they're going to need to fix. So yeah, it needs a paint job, but at least it's in good condition and it has a full tank of, I'm guessing, propane? I don't know. Try and get it right in the center of the trailer. And we'll strap it down. Very good. Okay. Let's head on back to the store. These are the, this is the area that has all the fields on the map. The one thing that, if we want to provide everything for the roller coaster, oh, here's the boathouse too. Let's talk about that for a second. But if we want to provide everything to the roller coaster, we do need wool. And so, at some point, we'll probably get some sheep and do some hay work um, in this series. But I don't, as of right now anyways, I don't plan on doing um, arable farming. Just because we're already doing that on Elm Creek. Okay, so, yeah, if you don't, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't know what this is, this is the boatyard. And it's kind of like the roller coaster in that we can gather materials and fix it up, but... Once this is fully uh, repaired or fixed back up, I don't even know. It doesn't really look like it's damaged. Maybe it just isn't completed or something. But then we can actually purchase it as a production, and we can build boats and make money, uh, which is kind of cool. So, and then you can you can actually launch the boats, or I don't know, maybe the game does it automatically uh, every morning and watch the boats launch into the river, which is really neat. So this is something else we most likely will do too, but it's not uh, our highest priority right now. Um, our priority, of course, is to is to get start buying the productions that we need to fix the roller coaster, um, and you know, and just advance in the game in general. Okay, so let's get back to the store here and get those containers loaded, and then, like I said, we have to decide. There's some boats out on the river out there. That's cool. Uh, we have to decide what we're going to, or how we're going to load these trailers.
Okay, so we're going to have to extend out uh, the low loader here in order to get these on here. And actually, we really should have the back or, or the door facing the back, though. With two of these on here, we're going to have to offload them anyways. So it kind of doesn't matter at this point. Oh, I should probably extend this before I put the container on. So let's do that. Okay, that's as far out as it goes. I think these will snap in place on this trailer. It's got to be all the way up against the front thingy there, front platform. It doesn't appear to be snapping to me. Maybe it's because I still have the forks in it. Oh, there it goes. Okay, yeah, it's probably because I just had the forks in it. Okay. Fair enough. I don't know how accurate I have to be in terms of getting things lined up, but let's twist it this way a little bit. Okay, yeah, see, that one didn't snap. We're going to put a little scratch in our paint, but... Huh. Well, is it actually on there, then? It's definitely not straight. Yeah, I mean, what's it? It's like it's like it is glued on there. I mean, I can't. Oh, it just budged a little bit. It's not really letting me shove it. So, okay, I guess we're gonna call it good. Okay, so can I, yeah, I, I definitely want to strap this one because it technically didn't, oh, it's not letting me do a strap. It didn't snap. That one did, so I'm assuming it's already locked in place, but I suppose we could put a couple straps on it too. Okay, so before we um, head back up to the property... Uh, we got to figure out how we're going to load this thing. So, the, probably the easiest and best solution, though the most expensive solution, is going to be to use the big Volvo top loader thingy. So, uh, where are we going to find that? We're going to find that in forestry machines. This guy, the high lift. That's $381,000. We could buy that and take out even more of a loan. And then we'll have it. 
Um, cause you know, we're eventually going to want this thing. This is kind of like the, the, the piece of equipment that the giants showed off the most, you know, for the platinum ex expansion. And it's pretty cool. <laughs> you can pick up a lot of logs with this thing. Oh uh, man, it's too bad though that, uh, it's not on sale, huh? I'm sure at some point it will come up for sale though. Safety frame. What's that? Oh, the thing in the back. Yeah. I, I would imagine you would want something like that with this. So this is the expensive solution. And the only way that's even, uh, you know, the, the only way that's a possibility at all for us is to take out a pretty substantial loan. And I'm not sure I want to do that. Um, here's another possibility, but it's almost as expensive. I eventually want to get this Volvo excavator because you can attach a really nice, um, tree harvester onto the end of this. Um, and you can also in the meantime, use it as a grapple. So this would, this would work pretty nicely for the loaders. Um, another possibility is we could try and directly load the logs right into the trailer with the forestry harvester, but a, that's kind of a cheesy way to do it. And B, we actually would lose um, capacity by doing that because it's just the way these things work. Um, so where does that leave us? We might be able to use the skid steer actually, now that I think about it to load. Yeah, that's an idea. We could use the log fork on the skid steer to load or we could invest in a wheel loader and a grapple, which is still going to uh, cost us quite a bit of money or we could lease one. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I know I'm a little bit, I'm just trying to decide what the, you know, the, cause the cool thing about this is there's, there's lots of different ways to do things, you know, and that's good. That's a really good thing, but I'm just trying to decide what makes the most sense for us without you know, going into a crap ton of bank debt, which I really don't want to do. The other option is to lease. So, okay, let's consider that for a minute. How much would it cost for us to lease this guy? It costs us $20,000 almost to lease this guy. We would certainly make that money back, um, you know, once we sold the containers. But I don't know. I just I think that's a bit much for us to be doing right now. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to um, we're going to try the skid steer with the log fork. And if it if if it's too klutzy, if it doesn't work very well, then we'll probably lease a front loader with a grapple. And, and go that route. But let's try the skid steer first because, you know, maybe it'll work fine and then, you know, we don't have any more money going out right at the moment. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so let's, uh, that car's turning there. <clears throat> okay, let's head back up to the property and uh, get some logging gone. All right, so it occurred to me <laughs> after I got up here uh, that we kind of need the forklift up here to take these back off. Uh, what I think I'll do is I'll take this one off. We'll leave this one attached and load it. Then we'll put this one back on and load it. Um, but if I drive the, Ooh, you know what we could do? Maybe we could take the John Deere down there and then put it on the forks and carry it back up here. Let's try that a little bit unconventional, but Hey, if it works, right?
Hmm. That's a little precarious. Let's just see what happens here. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And um, there's something to be said for having like a, a little gator like this. Because if we would have had a pickup truck, we would have had to arrange a, a Uber ride back down to town to go get it. <laughs> so that worked out pretty good. Okay, so let's get this um, uh, back container off the truck and figure out where we're gonna temporarily set it. Well, we'll probably just keep it on the forklift. Okay, um, we're gonna be logging up through there and we need to keep this space back here clear. What we might be able to do is come around this way. Whoa, Nelly. Okay, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. <laughs> Crap. The brakes wouldn't hold it. Um. Okay. What I was going to do was park it right there and use it kind of as like a backstop for logs so they don't roll down the hill, but that's probably not a good idea. So we'll go to plan B and just park it over here. We can't log any of the logs on the other side of the road anyways because that's not on our property. So let's just park it right here for now and we'll get it later when we're finished with the first container. So, let's open this up. Open this up. How do we open this? Open door R. Very nice. Okay. And um, we'll cut down a tree and then get this and drop the logs well, you know what we probably better do is drop the logs over here. Thus the reason why I wanted kind of a backstop. What we could do is maybe use this tree as the backstop. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay, so let's um let's pull the truck forward a little bit more. I've not seen any other traffic on this road besides me, so I don't think it'll be a big deal if we block the road. Okay, good. So what we can do is stage the logs up against this tree and then grab them with the skid steer and then drive them over here to get them inside. Now, uh, if you don't know this, all you have to do is get the log logs uh, right near the door here and then it'll auto load them inside. Uh, it's just the way it works. So whether you like that or not, that is the way that it works. Okay, so um, let's see. What's the next order of business here? Uh, let's jump in the Komatsu and get a tree down and give this a try. I'm, I'm going to do it uh, at least once on camera for you guys before uh, we wrap up this episode. I don't think I can get 
Are both of those spruces the same size? No. In fact, what is this tree? Is this a spruce? Yeah, that's a 3.58 meter spruce, and this is a 3.58 meter spruce. They're just... This one has more foliage on it. That's kind of neat, though, that they have some variation, even though they're the same breed of, uh, or species, I should say, of tree. Okay, can we grab this big lodgepole over here? to lift that up a little bit. Come on. Come on, dude. There we go. Timber! Well, okay, I think that's as good as it's going to get without fussing with it too much here. Oh, nuts. Okay, I want... Uh, we need to change this to six meters. There we go. Okay. Okay, so this first one that we did, uh, here, let's go grab the skid steer and the the claw, the log fork. Where the heck am I at? Can't even see. Okay, so that lines that one up with this one pretty good, so we know where to cut it. Uh, we want to cut it back just a little bit. Probably right about there. Good. Stop it. <laughs> okay, let's push this one in a little more that way. Now, are we able to handle this piece here? Yes, we are. Okay. So when, with containers, what I, from what I understand, the best thing to do is take the, the end pieces out, the shorter pieces, set them aside, and then, you know, either sell them separately or uh, mulch them up or something like that. So we kind of need a junk pile, I guess, for doing this. I'm not sure where that should be. Be exactly. So I guess for now I'm just gonna. Um, yeah, we could. Yeah, maybe we could make our junk pile right along this tree here. For for the time being, anyway. There we go. Okay, so we'll lift that up. And then I think all we have to do is kind of swing it around this way until we get it right by the door. There, and it goes in. Oh, stop. Interesting. So that's represented by, okay, yeah, let's just go in circles. <laughs> wheels like that much off from center you guys 
That's crazy. Okay, stop. Um, I'm, you know, I'll tell you what, I'm about ready to just return this doggone thing and go get a wheel loader. It's really irritating. Anyway, okay, so yeah, um, that represents then, does it tell us how much is in there? Two, really? 2.9, yeah, I guess that's 2.9 tons of wood or 914 liters. Okay, cool. So this is doable, uh, other than, you know, my challenges with the skid steer. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to... I'm going to put up with this skid steer for this this first load. And then once we get... Well, probably with both trailers. And once we get them... <coughs> there it goes again. Once we get both of these trailers completely loaded and sold, I'm expecting we're going to bring in at least 100 grand from what what I've seen and then we're gonna look at upgrading to you know maybe a wheel lo loader and a big grapple or something so that's that's the plan all right guys well you get the idea uh, I'm gonna let you go here and I'm gonna keep working on this but I will start the next episode somewhere uh, along the lines um, so you know maybe we'll start the next episode right when i'm kind of at the tail end of finishing this up and then we'll go from there okay so guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and uh, do i got it i guess i got it we will catch you in the next episode Bye bye